So in this case, I've got all the 23rd, 36 images, all by me, 36 images, all have the same shutter speed and aperture. So once I've done that, I make sure that I'm in grid view, and I scroll through them, and based on those parameters, I figure out which one is the brightest one. Because the odds are, if that one's the brightest one, and I bring it down a little bit to optimum exposure, all the others in that batch will be fine. I don't need to adjust each one individually. So I find the brightest image in that batch. And then I go to develop. So this one's got a lot of white on it, so it can be pretty bright relative to the others. So it's in this module, the develop module, that I can change and adjust the white balance. I see the histogram. I can change the sharpening, um, etc. So first things first. I have an order of operations here because everything affects the next thing. So the first thing I want to do is white balance. I want to tell the software this is my neutral gray. So it'll know then the spectrum from white to black. So I click on this eyedropper, press the neutral gray. All right. Then I adjust the tone curve. So you scroll down on the right hand side and from this little drop down list for this tone curve select linear. You've got linear, medium contrast or strong contrast. That's your those are your three options. And keep Notice here that I adjusted the white balance after import and I see, I'll see a growing history of all the things I do on this image. And I'm only affecting one image right now. The next thing after I've selected um, tone curve linear is to set the exposure. Or I need to check the exposure actually. So I move my mouse cursor over the white square. And as I do that, I see these numbers change. You can see slightly this is red, this is green, this is blue and they're around 92.8, 92.5, 91.9. So they normalize when I, when I white balance. So if, when I hover over the white square, I see numbers, 92, I, if I see them close to 96, then I'm satisfied with the exposure. So in order to bring the 92 up to 96, I need to move the exposure over a little bit, bring it a little brighter. Also, I have here in the corners of my histogram, I've turned these on. These are warnings for me. I say, light up if you think that this image is too dark or too light. This is not on, so it's okay. This one's a little dark. But as it is, I'm not worried about the dark because I think it's just reading this. I'm not worried about this specimen being too dark. So adjust the exposure as needed. And I mention here, I want this white value to be 93% as opposed to what my color checker card tells me because of the proximity of my color checker to the source, the light source. The, these are all shot in our photo light box, which um, emits light from all sides and focuses it on the center, which means that the color checker closer to the wall of the box is going to be lit more brightly than the center of the sheet. So by making this a little bit lower, the center of the sheet should be optimally exposed. And I don't want to overexpose. If anything, I want to slightly underexpose. Next step, select the tonal adjustment tool. Now this is kind of the fun part. So once you've selected this, you drag it over here. You click, hold, and pull. So click the mouse, hold it down, and move it back and forth. And as you do so, you see this curve change a little bit. And what I want to do is match the value that I see here, this is the original value, this is my new value. I want the value that I see here on the right side for this square to equal 63%. Right now it's at 74, so I dr click, hold, drag it down until I see 63. And that's according to the color specified here. I do the same for this square and for this square. And given that investment of time, I create a curve that looks like this and can pretty much guarantee that the values for this one, this one, and this one will fall in line. When I'm done, I can press done or I can click this again. And then I go here. So you remember it was in a linear curve. I adjusted the linear curve and now, oops, the last thing I do is select medium. So I adjust it and then just a little bit ask it to do a medium contrast for me. 
and then we sharpen. So scrolling down this right hand side, which is where you do all the changes, you find sharpening. Sharpening to an amount of 50 with a radius of 1 and a detail of 33 is a good bet. It'll be fine. Any more will cause uh, artifacts in your pictures. Better to be conservative. Next, we want to remove that, um, that color fringing around the, the areas of high contrast. In the older versions of Lightroom, you'll see all of these slides or screenshots are working with Lightroom 2. This is going to look a little bit different than Lightroom 5, which is what you'll have, but the concepts are all the same. So in Lightroom 5, as opposed to here, you'll have a box that you check yes or on and or off. Here we get to play around with color, color sliders to change or get rid of the red and the blue halo. And then, once I'm happy with my editing with that one picture, I select all the other pictures in that batch, and I synchronize them. And it's going to open up this window. And it asks me, of all the things that you did to this picture, which things do you want me to synchronize? Do you want me to synchronize everything? Or just a couple of things? In which case, I've selected everything, because they're all in the same batch. Synchronize. One really nice thing you can do is create presets. So if you know that every time you do image processing that you'll want a linear tone curve, that you'll want to sharpen to a radius of 55, or what was it, an amount 55 and a radius 33, radius 1, detail 33, you can save that as a user preset. And with the next time you run a batch, just click that button and it'll apply all those settings that you saved in that preset. And you name it according to whatever it is in that develop setting uh, that you want to change. So if you say low contrast or um, sharpening, etc. And to create it, you just click the plus, it opens up this window, it asks you which fields you want to save in that preset, and create. When you're happy, with your image processing, you're satisfied with your batch, you select all the images, and we're back in the library, back in the library module, select all of the images in grid view, for some reason it doesn't work in loop view, you gotta make sure you're in grid view, select them all, and export. And I can see here, of the 36 images I processed, 36 have been selected. Double check to make sure that you actually have selected all of those that you want to uh, export. So, what kinds of files do we want to export? Well, we know they're they're .CR2s right now because they came out of a camera or a Canon camera. <coughs> and I want to make for our, our archive DNGs, which stands for digital negative. And I'll talk about that in the next presentation. But for now, that's our, that's our image archive file type. So I choose the folder into which I want to save those images. So I'll be moving them from one, exporting a new set. Then I I leave the file name as the barcode number. I choose DNG as my format. It's going to give me um, camera raw file, uh, camera raw type, or later, whatever is the, the greatest number, select that. Uh, file extension DNG, medium size, export. I do the same for JPEGs. So I want a set of images that are going to the archive and a set of images that are going to the database to go online. Images that go into our database and that go online have to be small enough to be downloadable online and stored on our image server that services the database. So they're much smaller. So I save them in my JPEG for access, save them as JPEGs, quality 100, color space sRGB. Export. And I can see then when I open any one of these or right click on any one of these images in Windows Explorer and I change the column headings here, I can see there's my name. There's the copyright information. Wherever this image goes, that information is embedded in here. You can likewise see it here in the properties. So I, I want to suggest for you this, um, this pres presentation has been kind of brief and we'll go through a lot today in terms of the, the real live practice. But if you forget or need a refresher on anything that we've talked about, there are a lot of documents here that we've saved over the course of our Tritrophic project on all of these imaging workflows. 
um, and they might be a lot more in depth than what I had time to go through today. So if you're feeling uh, like you want to read some more information, check this out. Um, likewise, this is a, a blog that was written by the, form, um, the information manager for digitization that preceded me. And having come from a, a photography background, entering a botanical institution, he thought it'd be interesting to document his, I guess, his learning experience. Um, he didn't know anything about plants or about imaging plants. He'd photographed uh, archival museum pieces, artwork, etc., but nothing uh, natural history collection related. So this is his experience in, in learning and testing light sources, um, etc. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Any topic you might be interested in exploring about photography, B&H, which is a store in New York City that sells photography equipment among many, many other electronic kinds of things, they have free seminars um, delivered by wonderful professionals in the photography field, all aspects of the photography field. I highly recommend you Google, YouTube, B&H, and whatever is your photography interest of, co of uh, your photography question, and there will be an answer. Likewise, uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom has a YouTube channel dedicated to everything related to, to Lightroom. So that brings us to here. Does anyone have any questions about that? That stage, that step? Probably a lot because you learn by doing. We'll, we'll learn a lot this afternoon. And I really hope that um, at least by the end you'll grasp the value of a tool like, is, like Lightroom is, um, whether for your work collections, your personal collections, etc. Does anyone have any questions? Nope, ready to move on to the next?